From the moment that fans saw Naruto Uzumaki finally achieve his lifelong dream of becoming Hokage, there was one major question in the fandom that has gone on for the last nine years, which is why is it that Naruto Uzumaki, a guy with these monster chakra reserves, doesn't use shadow clones in Boruto to handle more of the Hokage duties so that he can spend more time with his family? As far back as spring 2015, when Naruto series creator Masashi Kishimoto dropped the 10 chapters for Naruto Gaiden, the seventh Hokage in the Scarlet Spring, better known as Naruto chapters 701 to 710 and also known as the Shin Uchiha arc, those questions started popping up. We had Boruto complaining about how his father was always so busy despite Naruto literally doing combat training games with Boruto by having Naruto use Shadow Clones to work with Boruto in the opening of that story. Boruto for as happy as he seemed and having time with his father was still having some resentment bubbling up on the surface because at the end of the day, Boruto didn't want to settle for a Shadow Clone. He wanted his real father. It built on Naruto's words to Boruto in chapter 700 of Naruto, where Boruto's acting out for his father's attention. He's scolded by Naruto, who turns the situation to a teaching moment, saying that his duties as Hokage come before his duties as Boruto's father, but Boruto took it in stride there because the person speaking to him wasn't a shadow clone. It was the real Naruto who took the time to speak to him before the Five Kage Summit took place. In Boruto, Naruto the movie, released later on in 2015, we had the controversial moments that stuck out with fans. First, it was Boruto having to check for confirmation that his father was the person he was speaking to and it wasn't a shadow clone. Then it was Naruto dropping the birthday cake during Himawari's 10th birthday party, breaking the promise that Naruto made to Boruto not to miss Himawari's birthday. We saw Naruto exhausted and slumped down at the Hokage desk and he's ashamed of himself. He's looking up at the photo of his own father and the previous Hokage. It led to questions by fans. Why is it that Naruto, the guy who has been able to fight off and on again for two whole days during that three day fourth ninja war why isn't he able to have more energy why is he slumped over why isn't he using shadow clones to handle the busy work of the okage position it led to all the memes that you still see today so i want to go ahead and address this whole thing now in a definitive video giving both the in-universe answer for this by explaining information that fans overlooked in some cases and in other cases likely weren't aware of the answer already being out there and i want to go over the real world answer answer for why Naruto has been depicted in the manner that he does. So we'll be starting with the in-universe answer since that's the most straightforward and ironically the most complicated one that we have and it should be a closed book on terms of answering the question and it should serve as something that longtime Naruto Uzumaki fans will end up respecting the character more for because it highlights his growth as a person especially when you contrast them to the literal first chapter of the series. The truth is that Naruto does use Shadow Clones as Hokage for his duties. That much has been shown more than once with him using Shadow Clones for ribbon cutting ceremonies, doing stuff at the academy, various deeds around the village, attending different meetings around the village, and giving interviews simultaneously. He's got clones running all over the place except for the Hokage office. Naruto tells us in the first chapter something that a surprising number of fans overlook, which is when Boruto asks is he speaking to a shadow clone, Naruto tells him of course not. We're in the Hokage office. For Naruto, the Hokage office is basically sacred ground. That's not my headcanon either, as we'll discuss later. The idea of having a shadow clone in that office isn't something he's ever considered because if for no other reason, then he puts the office on a pedestal. Read between the lines here. He says, of course not, as if to say it shouldn't even be a consideration he have a shadow clone in the Hokage office, and there's a reason for that. We have already gotten an extremely in-depth and detailed explanation given to us in the Naruto story. Naruto Retsuden, the seventh Hokage in the Spiral of Destiny. That trilogy of Naruto stories focusing on Naruto having that chakra illness that the Sage of Six Paths struggle with near the end of his life, which those stories take place in the months between the Mujina Bandits arc and the Vessel arc of Boruto's story. So if you're only familiar with the anime version of Sasuke Redstone, yes, the anime adapted that out of the correct place in the timeline. So what you saw in the anime isn't accurate. Now in the third story, Naruto is shown in the Hokage office looking at the photo of his father Minato and Naruto is struggling to complete this mountain of paperwork he makes a few bold claims, like his belief that due to his father not being a Jinchuriki, 
not coming from a famous clan, had his father been allowed to live, he potentially would have been stronger than Naruto was in the Boruto era. Naruto drops the answer to the question about why he doesn't use Shadow Clones. He says that he views it as cheating because when he looks at what he has to deal with as Hokage and he compares it to the other previous Hokage, he doesn't have the excuses that they had when it came to paperwork. The other Hokage, with the exception of Tsunade, they tended to stay on top of their paperwork by all accounts that Naruto was given, in particular Naruto's own father Minato, with Kakashi telling him how Minato kept everything done. The other Hokage, they were leading the village during a time of open warfare, with the exception being Kakashi, but Kakashi might as well have been in warfare, given the sense that Kakashi was the one that was overseeing a lot of the technology boom you see in Konoha. He was the one that was doing the negotiations for the continued treaty that you see amongst the ninja villages. Kakashi had a lot on his plate during that time. Naruto thinks to himself, if the other Hokage could do their paperwork during all these times of open cold warfare and other problems, how can Naruto, someone who was Hokage during a time of literal peace, justify using Shadow Clones to do the work that his predecessors were able to do without having to resort to such methods? That answer, it should be something that a true Naruto fan would be proud of because when you go back to chapter one, Naruto showed some of the signs of wanting to cut corners. Not in the way that Boruto did, but allow me to explain what I mean. When Naruto and Aruka were in the ramen shop, Naruto, more than anything else, wanted to wear a ninja headband, and it was innocent enough. The guy just wanted to wear the headband that he failed to earn in the two times he failed the Ninja Academy graduation earlier in the timeline. He wasn't asking to permanently own Aruka's headband. He just wanted to wear it to see what it felt like. He wanted to feel like a ninja for once, but... Aruka in chapter one drove home that lesson. After Naruto told him what being Hokage meant to him, that it meant being acknowledged by others and being the best ninja in the village, Aruka says, hey, if you wanna wear a ninja headband, you gotta earn that right to wear it first. He basically told him there are no shortcuts for what it is that you want. As far back as chapter one in the series, we saw Naruto wasn't afraid of hard work. And most importantly, he put the Hokage position onto a pedestal, which is why his answer in Naruto Retsin is so much in character. He said that he'd be the best Hokage better than every Hokage before him. Yet how could he make that claim if he needed to use Shadow Clones to accomplish a task they had no issue staying on top of during much more demanding periods. The answer is, is that he couldn't, which is why he doesn't. Naruto tells us that as painstaking as it is, he insists on doing all the paperwork himself, reading every document and stamping all of them, finding joys in the small things like the permit for places like the Thunderburger restaurant that Boruto loves to go to, and filling out the orders for the new headbands for the Ninja Academy graduates, even though each year the number of graduates goes down because less people are becoming ninjas now, Naruto is chasing the bar set by his father, who while only Hokage for a year, always managed to have his paperwork done and neatly organized on top of that. That's one of the downsides to Boruto's anime, not adapting things such as this in full or not adapting it at all. You miss out on a few important things such as this to answer your question. Granted, the anime and manga strongly implied that Naruto viewed the Hokage office as hallowed ground, but the fact that even in 2024, we still have people who can't grasp why Naruto doesn't use Shadow Clones to do his Hokage work, it's a sign that something wasn't communicated effectively enough to viewers. However, let's say Naruto did break those values of his and he uses Shadow Clones to do his paperwork. It doesn't change much because as we've seen with his clones before, they're sassy and they're not about telling Naruto to take that paperwork, turn it sideways and shove it document by document up his ass and they don't care if he gets a paper cut on his rectum in the process because those clones can do what they want and oftentimes as they've done in the past, they do exactly what they want. Now moving forward into the real world answer behind this, it's actually really sad when you look at it, but it's worth noting that the real world answer has elements that can be applied in universe as well. Have you ever wondered why Masashi Kishimoto hasn't actively drawn manga following the release of Naruto Gaiden in 2015? Have you ever wondered why he wanted to draw Boruto to the movie as a manga before 
being given the opportunity to draw it as a movie. The most that he's done since then is a couple of one shots, the Misky one shot, explaining how Misky first used Sage Mode and the Minato one shot he did as a special celebration for the 20th anniversary of the Naruto anime and the first ever global popularity poll where Minato won. It's because of the toll that it took on him to just finish drawing Naruto's manga when it was in serialization. The same way that you have had some Jujutsu Kaisen chapters published where their pencil sketches like this last one we got where it's not even fully finished, Kishimoto has some sketches around years 5 and 6 of the manga where we got pencil sketches and chapters that Ikimoto and Okubo, his two lead assistants, had to do major corrections on for the physical manga volumes that you get if you go to say Barnes and Noble and you buy those volumes you can't even tell that the weekly chapters were halfway done sketches prior because they cleaned everything up. Those health issues they didn't start there and they would actually continue onward as far back as when he initially wanted to draw board to the movie as a special manga in Weekly Shonen Jump. But Shueisha knowing the guy's condition ordered it to be a movie. Going even further into this and circling it back to the topic at hand. It's important to understand this information and the next set of information I'm going to give you because you should start looking at Naruto and Naruto's family life and you should start seeing some similarities. So at one point the guy passes out at the bottom of his stairs because he fell down the stairs and his wife and child they found him there and the guy gets back up and goes back up to his office so he can continue working to meet his deadlines. That's why you don't see him draw Boruto, but merely just give the story drafts and he checks on the storyboards. Something that one of the editors from Shueisha has confirmed for that. Something Ikimoto himself has confirmed back in 2018. As well as the editor assigned to him once Boruto transferred over to V-Jump Magazine where it currently runs. That's why with Samurai 8, which was drawn by his other assistant Okubo, who was less experienced than Ikimoto, you saw a similar thing where the story is handled by Kishimoto and you see Kishimoto literally step in and make some of the corrections which you can see in the physical volumes where you see the before and afters. Whereas he can trust Ikimoto to the point where Ikimoto said back in 2016 that he has carte blanche for the most part when it comes to art with Kishimoto making suggestions for art changes like hey redo the eyes here or redo this panel here or redo these storyboards. Ikimoto can take that feedback and make them with no direct involvement from Kishimoto after that. So I bring that up to say for this reason. Multiple times when you see Naruto when it was in serialization, Kishimoto stated that Naruto's personality and his character and how he handles situations and some of the character interactions, they're a direct reflection of Kishimoto in his own life. Kishimoto became a father when Naruto was serialized. That's the whole reason why Naruto met Minato and then he met Kashina. The same way that Boruto saw his father working himself to the bone, hardly able to spend time with them. Kishimoto's own child saw him working between 19 and 21 hours out of the day just to make deadlines, where the guy only had three hours of sleep on most days, despite Kishimoto himself having a staff of seven assistants. You see Naruto and Boruto early on with that tense relationship that they had because it's a reflection of him and his child. Back when Naruto the Last was being promoted in one of those TV interviews he did back then, he said that his own child didn't refer to him as father when people asked but instead he was always referred to as the guy, instead he was referred to as the guy who draws Naruto. Not father, not daddy, not papa, whatever term you want to use. Instead he was called the guy who draws Naruto. Think about how that would make you feel if you're a parent. And I know some of you guys are parents. Think of how that would make you feel. That's why you'll see small things in the Uzumaki family household that are buried beneath boards or just having daddy issues. Like for instance, people are being ignorant years ago wondering, hey, why is it that Naruto's sleeping in another bedroom away from Hinata? And people are getting pissed off saying that they were disrespecting Naruto and Hinata's relationship. And so I had to touch on it in a review back then when the chapters were first coming out. But for the sake of this video, I'll restate it. It goes back to Japanese culture and it's important to not view things from a Western perspective when you're reading an Eastern story. It's not uncommon for a spouse who keeps crazy work hours, such as Naruto, to have a bed in another bedroom in their home because it's a respect thing to not disturb the sleep of their partner. Naruto, like Kishimoto, kept long hours. In another one of these light novels that the anime never adapts, Shikamaru Shinden Morning Clouds and another scene from Naruto Retsuden, actually another couple of scenes from Naruto Retsuden, Shikamaru at one point offers to do the remaining paperwork for Naruto Tokage office because 
He'd been working in the office for a full three days, nonstop, without going home, but he's constantly sending out shadow clones to all the busy work around the village. He's burning the candle constantly at both ends, to the point where Hinata would bring a change of clothes to him and food to Naruto because Naruto would forget to eat if he didn't have instant ramen in his office. Naruto turns down the offer for help for the reason we went over earlier. While doing paperwork isn't taxing in the way that battling Edo Tensei and battling Zetsus and Obito was, it's still taxing from a mental perspective, which that doesn't get brought up enough. Anyone who's ever worked a corporate job or an office job, they can tell you how tired they are at the end of a long day, even though you haven't done much physical work because you're just mentally drained. Back when I used to work for two politicians and I ran the social media platforms for both of them during their terms, I'd be mentally drained at the end of the day from doing social media work and other paperwork. The last thing I felt like doing when I got done at work was leaving one desk and trading it in for another desk to work on a YouTube video that would be going up in the next two to three days. But I did it nonetheless until I could afford an editor to help me out and take some of that burden. The mental fatigue, it hits just as hard, if not harder than physical fatigue. For Naruto, on top of busting out clones constantly over a three day period, the mental fatigue is the more alarming thing because look at Naruto closely. What is Naruto's primary chakra type? Not his primary chakra nature type, which everyone knows his wind release, but his primary chakra type. The answer is yang release. Naruto excels in things that require physical energy, but he's always been one behind the curve when it comes to things requiring yin release, i.e. mental and spiritual energy. Doing paperwork requires that mental energy, something that Naruto's never had enormous abundance of. So the fatigue that Naruto feels from expending so much of that mental energy is more taxing for him than throwing down with Madara and Obito and Kaguya all on the same day. It's a different kind of fatigue, which speaks volumes to the significance of one of Naruto's most iconic powers. But that's another video for another day that I'll get back to you guys with later on. But in the meantime, click here to watch this Naruto video essay on why Naruto's journey as Hokage was actually guided by the red string of fate. <laughs>